Hello viewers, it's your girl Matilda and today we are at Saboba district in the northern region of Ghana. We are here to know more about the people of Saboba, their language, their culture, their food and their lifestyle here. Come to her with me as we get to know more about the people of Saboba. Remember to follow us on all our social media platforms at Plum City TV. Okay, so we are here and on a field and we can see some people I don't know if it's weeding or harvesting but then we'll get closer to them to know more of what they are doing come with me hello um, please can we know what you are doing please we are harvesting rice okay oh, okay so there's a rice farm actually oh, okay I actually thought rice is harvested in a waterlogged area. So how possible is it for you to harvest rice in a dry land? It's, it's, it's on seasonal basis. During the rainy season, or rice, we cultivate rice in the rainy season. Just last, waterlogged area as you said. But this season is a dry season where the rice might have been ready. So this is a season in which we harvest it. In a ready manner. Okay, so how do you different? I can see so many things growing here. So how do you identify the rice? Can you show us how you do the cutting process, the harvesting process? So we cut it together with the rice, uh, with the weeds from the farm. Okay. And after you don't segregate them, you just cut them together. Then after that, you gather them. Then the cow will come and step step on them to remove the seeds from the. The, the plant itself or the whole plant then after that the winnowing takes place then the whole thing process is done oh that's lovely so as you heard the gentleman here said the process is by cutting both the weeds and the rice together and then a tractor would come and then continue the process then winnowing will go on to as well that we finally get the rice that we eat in Accra so we'll try and see if we can also participate in this process okay can you please show me how you do it you hold a sickle okay. in your right uh, hand okay. then hold the rice or just hold the rice with the left hand okay. then with the help of the sickle mm -hmm. you pull the left hand against the sickle okay. then it is caught with the rice wow. then you gather them wow. so lovely viewers i'll try this out and we'll see how best i can also do this so i hold the sickle and um, the rice with my left you hold it this way okay this way, this way. then the this down. way then pull it towards me pull it oh okay oh i see Wow, wow. This, this is a very interesting process. Very, very interesting. So as you can see, the sun is quite hot, but our daddy here is in the process. So we'll get closer to him and also know his experiences. He is the eldest here. <laughs> Like a match, I can say, No, 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 no
Okay, Okay. 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 So all our daddy here is saying is, um, he has been farming rice for twelve years now, and with the rice farming, he, I asked if he would prefer the dry season harvesting or the wet season, and for him, the wet season is the best because when it's the dry season is the best because when it's during the wet seasons, the rice would regenerate. The harvested rice would regenerate, making it difficult to get more grains as compared to the dry season. We are out of the rice farm now and moving on to the next location. Come with me as we journey ahead to know what else Sabuba has for us. Let's go. <laughs> Hello lovely viewers, now we are at the water body that leads to Togoland and we want to get closer and know what happens here. Come along. Oh wow, so we see kids around. Let's get closer and find out if they are actually from Togo and schooling here in Saboba. Our yellow, <laughs> our yellow yellow driver will be our tour guide for today since he's a member of this community and knows much more um, of what goes on here. So, Mr. Yellow Yellow Driver, please may we know your name. My name is called Abbas. Abbas. Okay. Abbas, what really goes on here? Is it based specifically for crossing to Togo or it's for fishing or what else? Uh, it's for for crossing for Togo and then for for fishing too. Uh, so on what days are these? Um, is this particular place very busy in terms of fishing? Any time, any time, may busy. Okay, okay. So it looks like today we are not really seeing more of the fishing going on. Is there any problem? Is it that the because the weather is hot, the fishermen are resting or what? Because the weather is hot, no. That is why they are not coming. Unless evening time that they will come. Okay. okay, so by evening time there will be a lot of fishermen here. Okay, so what happens when somebody wants to cross to Togo? Does it mean after crossing and getting to the far end you are in Togo or you'd have to walk a little further to get into Togo? No, unless you walk a little so like a few minutes and then you can get to Togo. Okay, so if I understand you, all the places over there after the riverside is also Ghana. No, it's not a Ghana. That, that's Togo. Okay. Okay. Okay, people. You heard Mr. Yellow Yellow Driver, Mr. Abbas, <laughs> telling us what goes on actually here. What's the name of this river? River Voti. Okay. River Oti. So... Can you give us any history of this particular river? You don't know. Okay, that's fine. So, does it is it the same river that the children got drowned in when they went with their headmaster? No, it's not here. Okay, but is it connected to that particular river? Yes, it's connected to the river. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I would like to find out your names. Please, what's your name? Flemo. 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 And you? Faustina. Faustina, yes. Gifty. Gifty. You? Diana. Come. Diana. 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 Comfort. Comfort. Okay, so, my dear little ones, what were you doing here? Like, do you cross to the other side and go home? Where do you stay? 
We are still at Togo. Togo. Yes. You still at Togo. So, where, where's the name of your school? Bwagba. Bwagba. Okay, so you come all the way from the other end to this side, then walk further to Bwagba LA Primary School, right? Okay, so what classes are you in? I'm classes. Class six. Five. Three. Three. Two. Two. Okay, so which particular village in Togo? Are you coming from? Gayando. 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 Okay, Gayando sounds like a Kokomba name. Yes. So does it mean that particular land in Togo is dominated by Kokombes? Yes. Okay. So they are Koko, you are a Kokomba from Gayando. Okay. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at Okay. So, um, make a dendu. Because I can now put in a. Nika do no school like Uncle Yala Bink. Near Funu do get Tamo Baba Blatunuka de Manango Purin in a bake, Bungo Cabe, the Bantz in a Gurgun Napala. The Aka do no school, Bungo Yal like Nimponi, little lebe in a banger. In Tinia Lurkia Capi, a uniform, an anime, a la way, Kunia, a la way in those school. I Okay. Philemon explained to us that sometimes on their way when the river is full, they do not get canoes to take to get on board to this side of the river. So they have to go back home missing school for that day. And sometimes too, on their way coming, the canoe turns upside down and they have to swim back to their homes with their wet uniforms. Keep following us on all our social media platforms at Brown City TV. Stay tuned for more adventure. So this is how Philemon and his friends get back home after um, the day's work in school. They sometimes get to the riverside and there's no rider to take them. So they have to ride themselves to the other side of the river with all their books, their bicycles, their bags, and all other accessories. Is that accessories? <coughs> There's no lifeguard for anyone. They are just on the boats, hoping and praying that they will get to the end safely. As you can see, they've even taken their school sandals off while journeying back to their homes. So this is how some students get back home and come back to school on their boots by themselves with no safeguards. We have with us a gentleman who just crossed over from the other side and we would like to interact with him too. Okay. Can you immigration stop me. Okay. How many times are crossing your way in a day? Come on, my poor work, my chap and I are to fully eclipse a train up a can't go to water. I can be up, I can be up, car, 
Nebunoka in new way poker tun tun could chew. Aka canke, Bunabudu, Nia, em Bongo young like Ler, Kutcher, Beno, in Sinangaka, but can you weigh ya? Nanga never may. Okay, Nyanga can I can about the gong man can I batch up in the Bongo Gully. And the gong man came Bunganyan in the number. I could choke up an unfuny, come up for you. I can make a coat while you come on. I can keep a guy in it. Then a bam, a guy, a cup of boy, I check in a cannon boy, I'll come in my cab, boy, I'm a cup of my love. So, bin the abbey, the machia, come up, be a cup, and I can be a bigger, bong away, loud chunk. So, near about to be fine and mala, can I treat you to the banana? Okay, thank you. Okay, so viewers, what's Okay, so viewers, what the gentleman here said is trying to say is that on a daily basis he moves from Ghana, which is where he stays, across this river to the other side, carrying goods in and out. And I asked if he has if he has problems with immigration teams both outside and here. And he says sometimes he does, but then he explains to them what he is doing there and the reasons that brought him to that side of the country. Hi viewers, this is still Pram City TV and we are still at the riverside moving towards another location. Stay tuned and don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at Pram City TV. Let's go. And she would like to say hi to us. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sababa. Good, good afternoon, my parents. Okay. Thank Please good afternoon, all Sababa. Okay. Please, what's your name? I'm Bella. My name is Salima. It's Anjo. Yes. Okay. And Salima, what do you do here aside selling purple? So, yeah, yeah, that. So, so, I'll, I'll speak English. Okay. I saw you are still insist on speaking English with us. Yes, Isn't that amazing? Yes, it's fine. I'm your business woman. Yeah. is good for me. Mm -hmm. My business is fine. I want to tell people who. Yes, Sawaba is fine. So he make a cry is good for you. Sawaba is good. Okay. So he want peace. Okay. He want peace. Mm -hmm. He hears say the Gomba and Kumba people is <laughs> No, Sawaba yes. No, I do. No fight. He didn't hear anything. So you are one piece. Thank you. Okay, so Emma is telling me that Saboma is a one piece of So you can come here at any time, any hour. You have an experience. So we are here with another lovely mother who is preparing a meal that she sells here for the people of Saboba. So let's find out from here what she is preparing and how she does it. Nina, I'm going. I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit. Ne imu. Iti bada na bada ni ngani kana ngani. Imu bada mo na kana kanyo pa. Banku ma kai tuna ni imu mo ni kente ba. Ama imu kai tuna ni kanyo da kanyo da la. Iti kanyo da bino me imu je banku ni eh kente ya. Bungu mo ni imu kana. 
Okay, okay. In Tika, Ara, a side bang from the king here. I can now the back of Waga, she be was a was a bang on was a was a bang on it, bang on it. Okay, do you have car for you in the key? Yo, thank you. Okay. So mama sell, our mother here is telling us that she is a kinky seller and a banku seller as well. And then the market is booming. The market for rice booms mostly on market days, which is Saturday. So kinky and banku is sold on a daily basis, Monday to Saturday. But then rice is added to it mostly on Saturdays. Stick and stay with us. It's still from City TV. We are here with one fine gentleman who has something to say. Please, what's your name? My name is Alaji Jinga. Alaji Jinga. Chairman. Sabura. Okay. Alaji Jinga, what are some of the challenges that you face here as a group? We have a lot of challenges. Our roads are not good. And secondly, our fuel prices too have increased. And when you look at it, it, has, it is disturbing our, our drivers, wherever they can travel. Because when we want to transport our driver uh, our passengers to Yundi and back or Tamale and back the fare in it doesn't help us at all so we're planning to see if the government can come out and help us reduce the prices of the fuel else we can't work at all mm -hmm. so aside the fuel being a challenge what other challenges do you yes, face people come from different places voter region upper region and all these things to Spain market. But because of these full world crashes, it is making them not to get chance to come and spend market again. <laughs> not to come and spend market. Um, secondly, our roads too are no good. We have a bridge whereby any time it is rainy season, we have to stop traveling. If not, we can't do anything. So we are pleading on the government to come out and help us work on the roads and especially the bridge. The brick is our problem. The brick is our problem. When you look at it, it has made even food staffs and all these things to go high. Because our roads are no good. We can they can't transport the food in. They can't bring in anything. And our bridges too are always flooded during rainy season. And as it is, it is dry season, we are pleading to the government to come out or the Minister of Roads and Highways to come out and see how he can work on our roads for us. Thank you very much, Alaji. Okay, so Alaji has laid down his complaints to us. So please, we will plead with the right authorities to take immediate actions to help them with their challenges. Once again, it's Palm City TV. Remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you very much. Please, we would like you to introduce yourself to us. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, my name is Bukare Moses Mabamba. I am a, re a retired mathematics lecturer from the University of Education, Wilderville. I'm also a politician. 
I began my political career in Samoa here as a, the first PNDC district secretary for the then Saboba Charponi district and moved on to become the first MP for Saboba. I was in parliament for two terms and left and went out of the country to do my postgraduate studies in mathematics at the University of Leeds in the UK. Returned in 2015 no, I'm sorry, 2015, 2005. I came in 2005. I got an appointment at the University of Education as a lecturer. I stayed there for close to six years. And when in 2009, His Excellency, the late Professor Atamils, became President of Ghana, he appointed me first as Deputy Minister to the Northern Region. I stayed in that office for nine months and I was promoted as the substantive regional minister for the rest of the period of his government. That is from 2010 to 2013. Thereafter, after his demise, John Muhammad became the president of Ghana and appointed me Ghana's ambassador to Angola with concurrent accreditation to Gabon. I was in that office until 2017 when NDC lost political power here in Ghana and I came back home. And when I came back home, I resigned from the university employment and I've been a private man ever since. But I'm currently one of the five vice, national vice chairman of NDC, the party in waiting to take over in 2024. Thank you very much, Honorable. So, Honorable, we, His Excellency, pardon me for that. <laughs> Thank you. I would prefer, you see, I told you I began as a PNDC secretary. I would prefer Comrade. Yeah, Comrade is the, 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 the title that we like most. Thank comrade you very much, whatever. Comrade. Yes. So, when we came into this township, we were introduced to the Concomba tribe. Yes, but then we went around and we realized that it has um, this town or this district is having way more than Concombes. We have other other tribes. So we wanted you to talk more about the people here and how Concombes got in, or were they here as in, in this their town, which they openly welcomed others in? This your question demands some three hours a response. Because we have to go back into history. All I know from my West African history, we have been the indigenous occupants of this part of Ghana known as the Eastern Corridor of Ghana and part of Togo for centuries. All history books point to the fact that we were here before the Dagombes came. We were here before the Nanumbas came, we were here before the Chokosis came. And so we are uh, the original people who have been living in this OT basin. So we didn't come from anywhere. We have been here all along. But unfortunately, because in those days, education was brought into the area by the Arabs and the Gobes embraced the Islamic region, Nanumbes embraced it, Mamprosis embraced it, the Gonjes embraced it. So they were the people who were given recognition because of that early education to God. So when the Germans came, they also still gave the recognition to these tribes and helped them to rule over us until the British took over. And if you remember your history very well, the British took over and brought what was being practiced in northern Nigeria known as indirect rule. And indirect rule means the governor is sitting in his house and he has given some special powers to the chief, coercive power to the chief to do the administration for him. So if the chief invites you to his palace and you refuse to come, the colonial government has policemen in the chief's palace who will come and bring you by force to the chief's palace. But at independence, 
the first president of Ghana dismantled that arrangement. And so and that is why the chief's powers over the years became weak. Because if you invite me to your palace and I don't go, there's nothing you can do to me. Especially when I know that I've not offended you. If I've offended the state or whatever, city but if I've not offended, but in those days, whether you offended or not, once they wanted you and you failed to come, you will be subjected to some kind of force from the colonial government. And so, but with Kwame Kumas uh, arrival, he started with expansion of education to the area. So, in 1951, we got our first primary school here in Sabuba. Can you imagine, 1951? When other people got education as early as 14, 92, and the rest. So, we got the primary school here in 1951, the Sabuba primary school. And that is how we started getting literacy. And uh, your reverend, uh, who is with us here, his father, uh, our late uh, grandfather, that's how they came up as our early uh, literacy. And then with time uh, and at independence, we started getting uh, more schools. And, and I remember that at the time that I came here at DC, we had less than uh, 10 uh, primary schools here with only one JSS. But by the time I left, the JSS increased to four. And the primary schools, more than 20 of them, all over the place. And others came and continued expanding. But right now, as I talk to you now, I don't know the number of JSS we have in the district, but there are more than 10, I'm, I, I can be sure of that. We have EP Secondary School, which was built by the EP Church, but the government came in during the PNDC time to take over the school. The Catholic Church, too, in 19... 67 opened a technical school and government again through PNDC took over that school too and to the two schools are the two second cycle institutions in the district and they are doing very well they are doing very well okay, thank you very much daddy so we also would like to know in this community what is the major occupation because it looks like when we were coming we had we know that northerners are into farming and which is yam farming but then we haven't really seen any form of yam farm in yam anywhere around here but then we see more of rice and we see that there are water bodies around too so want to know is it fish farming or what is the most occupation that is before i answer this question I, I just remember that I didn't finish answering the part of your question. You asked, who are the people here? Like I told you, who were here and our brother the Moshis came to join us. And those who live with us here, they have been with us here for, for over 100 years. So they are now part of us. We treat them as our brethren. We, are not, we, don't, we don't look at them as strangers anymore. Then our neighbor, Jokosis too. History has it that they came in as missionaries from Western region in Zimbabwe to fight for the Mampusi Kingdom. And after the war, some went back, others stayed back. So they are to our further north. They are told we were part of, we were formerly in the same district, but they now have an autonomous district too. So they are also, we have a few of them who are still part of the Saoba district. But then we have a, a few Dagombes too in the Mong area. But I can tell you that 80% or 85% of the inhabitants of the district are Kokombes. So it's a predominantly Kokumba enclave. Yeah, but we have no problem with any other person settling with us. I'm happy you said that when you came, you started seeing water bodies, water bodies, or waterlogged areas. You don't farm yam in waterlogged areas. And so, so if you see waterlogged areas along the road, there will be no yam farm along the road. You need to go to the villages. Maybe if you are tired, I'll just go on with you to my village, which is six miles away from here on the Wapulu Road, and then they will take you to the farms. And you see that the farms are there. So those living along the, the road where there is water log, you naturally will see a rice farm. But if you go to the indigenous, they move further interland, uh, into the hinterland and, and make their young farms. So we are still young farmers and we farm a lot of maize too. Some are into rice. But rice farming is a commercial entity. Most of the people who farm the rice just farm to sell. It's not our staple food. Our staple food is fufu and tz. And tz is guinea corn and maize. And then the yam, so when the yam season is over, we we'll go on to our tz. But those who, as a result of uh, other 
commercial entities have been able to make some small money. They can afford to buy rice and this thing. I remember when I was a small boy, it was only Christmas and New Year that I, that I saw rice in the house. And it was like you were winning a World Cup. But these days, a lot of people eat rice uh, uh, intermittently, but our staple food is fufu and tea. So the yam, we still farm yam a lot. In fact, even the landlord we are sitting with here, he has a fish farm here. He made a fish farm here, it was booming very well, but of late he decided to suspend it. I've been encouraging him to revive it. The river Otitu is just in the corner. Some of our people do, they do fishing. But you know, because of our not too careful practices, we have uh, polluted some of the water bodies and these uh, marine lives are all gone. And so when they go fishing, they, they don't catch the lot as they used to do in those days. Um, but they catch fish and even catch the fingerlings. So even catch the fingerlings, what is going to generate into fish in the next six months? That's the problem. So we still have a few people who are fishermen, but the most prominent of them are the Batos, or those are brothers from the Ebe area and uh, the live with us around the along the river. They do a lot of fishing. A few cocoa bears to do, but majority of them are uh, from the Porta region. Thank you very much. So um, we also like to know about the festivals yeah. of concombers specifically and other uh, uh, our Waterloo. Unfortunately, we, do, we, we don't have any festival that we celebrate, even though we are touted as the, the, what, the largest producers of yam. People who even produce yam in gardens are celebrating yam festivals that we are not doing. And it's one of the challenges that the Cocoa Association is trying to work at. A few communities have started what we call Interquanda. That is uh, after we have harvested, like we are harvesting now. By December, we will harvest all our greens. Then they will bring you to early January and, uh, to thank the gods for a good harvest, a successful year, and then to pray for a, a prosperous new year. And then that is called the Ponda. That is what most communities do, but not on a very high scale. So it is not too known. We, so, so that is where we have a problem. But we religiously celebrate fire festival, you know fire festival, we call it Namishi, where they throw fire over a period of, after, uh, not, not demonstrated, after uh, parading the streets in town with fire on uh, uh, bundles of bush, they go and throw it on a tree as a sign of what we call the fire festival. The, the Muslims, they do it still on the last game, but we do it just very small uh, scale. So we don't actually have a festival we celebrate. But the Congo Association has instituted a convention that we all attend every Easter. The Congo Association since 1977. Every Easter we meet here to discuss what we have done over the year and programs as to what we should do in the ensuing year. So Koya is the only prominent Organization, I know they come to do conventions here every Easter. But we cannot turn those conventions into festivals. So, our festivals, we are not doing too well there. But we hope that once Koya would achieve, they are doing something about it. Maybe in the next five years, we should be on track. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Thank Maybe, you. Maybe, um, what do you say about festival? I don't know. Yeah, apart from the Ponda, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. So, there was one part that caught my interest. He said when you were kids or when you were youth, um, you used to take rice occasionally. That is during festive periods. Yeah. Yes, and you were very happy, yeah. like you had something out yeah. with you. So, I want to ask, so from looking at your youthful age and looking at your, we, your children now, our youthful age in this community, what is the difference that you see? Well, the difference is that as a result of some education that we have received with some people venturing into business and other uh, income generating activities, our living standards have improved. So some average families eat better than we were eating. We were eating one way. You eat easier for about six months, for food for three months, and then you are back again. But this time, there are so many families that can afford to give their children balanced meals from other cereals. So, Life now is better, but I can also 
to say that our food was purer than your food. Because your food is now full of chemicals. But our food was, there was no fertilizer in those days, so it was just pure organic uh, uh, foods. But now with the chemicals all over the place, you are eating chemicals. That's why you are looking bigger than your parents. But uh, we, 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 uh, some people call it progress, so we also accept that it's progress. Okay, so um, the very last question. What would you advise our viewers out there who would want to visit this district but are always scared to come because they always hear of cucumbers, they like fighting, they are very this, that. What is your advice to everyone out there? Well, you see, you are here. You have come. You are a native, but uh, your other uh, crew, crew members are not. Ask them since they came, whether they ask them what they want here. So, so when you are far away, you have some perception about this. But the thing is that we have a challenge that no government is willing to address. At the beginning of the interview, I told you that we are the aborigines of this area. But everybody now wants us to believe that we are squatters. And that is the narrative that we, will, we do not want to listen to, which might be corrected. If that narrative is corrected, all these problems that are talking about will not be there. Well, if I know that I'm, I'm uh, an indigenous of this area, and you tell me that I'm not an indigenous, you know that definitely it will bring about a strife. But for some time now, because we are all beginning to understand each other, since that before we have any conflict again, we are all beginning to agree that, look, let us coexist and enjoy the fruits of nature. Uh, so, when you are far away, you hear of us differently. But when you come here, there's nothing here. So anybody who wants to visit is welcome. Any time of the year, just come. And you enjoy the, the life of Zimbabwe. We are, you know, as I, uh, as I said earlier, we are farmers. So there's a lot to eat here. When you visit your friend here, you have no problem about food. And uh, I don't know whether your cameraman has gone to buy food in one of the restaurants. It's 10 cities. But I don't think if you go and buy food, 10 cities in Prapa, I don't think if you are a small child, we will be we, we cannot eat. But yeah, you go, it's just 10 cities. And you are done. Just, just one just behind this uh, hotel. Go on. And just go there and say you want uh, rice. Let's see this. You have about three pieces of meat and then some sizable quantity amount of uh, rice. So life is fine here. And you can see. You can see the way we are looking. We are looking very fine. Yeah. So you are always welcome. Forget all those uh, negative stories about us. You know, people say when people don't like you, even when you are swimming, they say you are making dust. Masa, you are swimming, they say you are making dust. So, or you are producing dust. So, that is it. So, Pokemon all over Ghana are just peace loving people. But you know, there is a tolerance limit to which anybody can then deal. People push me to the wall. You know that I have to also push back. But why you don't push me to the wall? Uh, put up a piece. That's all. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Yeah. And I'm happy to meet uh, my good friend Aaron, who is a special assistant to my MP. So when you go, my regards to MP, we are in the same fraternity, and we are working very hard to come back, God willing, in 2024, whether they like it or not, there must be a change. We had our honorable. In 2024, there must be a change. And he also said, at any time you want, you can just come down here and visit the Saboba district. It's a peaceful and loving community with a lot to eat and very at, at a very affordable prices. Remember to follow us on all our social media platforms at Pram City TV. <laughs>
region of Ghana, Sabuba district to be precise. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media handles at Pram City TV on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Umvole Bye.